books to page 135. We stand this day, all of us, in the presence of our God, youth and elders, women and men, those close to tradition and those who have been estranged, all are welcome in this community of prayer. Around the world, all Israel greets this holy day. We stand with them, a people united by our history and fate, linked in mind and heart to generations past, who stood before God to be cleansed of their sins in Russia, Poland, Germany, and Spain, in Morocco, Egypt, Brazil, and India. Our great-grandparents are here with us today, and our great, great grandchildren as well. All are present in memory and hope. We stand this sacred morning, all of us, as one. Page 138. <laughs> Page 157. Ben Azai used to say, treat no one with scorn, regard nothing as useless, for all people have their moment, for all things have their place. Diamonds, when found in the ground, may look like worthless pieces of glass, it takes an expert to see the precious gem that is hidden within. Become an expert in human beings. Learn to see each as a diamond in the rough. Baruch ata Adonai rofechol basar umafli laasot. Blessed are you, God, who performs the miracles of creation and healing. We turn the page. Hello, hi. 
Page 163, said the Roman procurator Turnus Rufus to Rabbi Akiva, whose acts are greater, those of human beings or those of God? Rabbi Akiva answered, the deeds of human beings are greater. Surprised, Turnus Rufus asked, but can you create the heavens and the earth? Akiva replied, do not speak to me of what is beyond the reach of humankind. Speak of what is available to human beings. Akiva then brought to Turnus Rufus wheat stalks and cakes, raw flax and fine linen. The wheat and the flax are the work of God, said Akiva, but the cakes and the linen were made by human beings. Are they not superior? So our sages taught, all created things require refining and improvement. The mustard seed needs to be sweetened. The lupine needs to be soaked. The wheat needs to be ground. And the human being needs to be repaired. The world that is given into our hands is still incomplete. Go forth then and work. Work to make it better. Page 171. This is one of my favorite pieces of music. I asked our cantor early on if we could hear this this morning. I heard this piece in Israel summers ago while on sabbatical. It's just so beautiful. Thank you for agreeing to sing this this morning. Oh, thanks for having the idea. <laughs> Shirakaya Ul Sholneinu Rina Kahamom Gala Vesiv Toteinu Shevach Kemerka Veirakia Veneinu Meirot Kashemesh Vechayar Sot can I share Shira <laughs> 
77. Question is asked, what color is grass? Let's read together. The hurried eye said green, but following the sheen of spring woods, there stretched meadows marbled in such hues of yellow, green, red, green, and blues merging below, between. What color is grass, the thoughtful eye said, love. What color is love, let's read together. The harried heart said, flame, but following the changing years. There were more prisms of delight, and spectrum flowed out of the name, paling moon, stars, and sun. What color is love, the knowing heart said, one. We turn the page and we rise if we're able for our call to worship. be seated. We wrap themes around the Shema every time we worship. The theme of creation is filled often with poetry. So I found a piece of text that you won't find in your book to share with you this morning. The theme is creation. Author of life architect of creation, artist of earth, your works declare your holy name, mighty rivers, turbulent seas, towering mountains, rolling hills, vast spaces of brilliance and grandeur. You created palette and paint, color and hue, shape and form, abundant and beautiful glorious and majestic, full of mystery and wonder. Blessed are you, God. Blessed are you, God. With divine love, you created a world of splendor. Page 180. May you 
shine an light on Zion, and may we soon be privileged to share in that light. Baruch Adonai, Yotzer Page 183, we wrap themes around the Shema, creation and revelation. Let's read this piece about revelation together. You love us by helping us grow. You give us Torah, a ladder for the soul, words that draw us upward. Every mitzvah, an invitation to climb, forge and kiln and crucible, Purify our hearts to give, you give us, us Torah. Torah. You love, love us by, by helping us grow. Page 186. A long time ago in the courtyard of the temple, on the holy day of Yom Kippur, the high priest proclaimed aloud the sacred name of God, and all the people fell to the ground, prostrated themselves, and called, Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. Millennia have passed, but still, still we speak these words aloud, witnesses forever to the truth of God's dominion. We rise once again. Shema. We read these words of the Vahavta together, beginning on page 188, continuing on to 191. Together we say, Vahavta, eight Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Levavcha, Uvechol Nafshecha, Uvechol Meodecha, Vahayu Hadivarim Haele, Asher Anochi Metzavacha Hayom, Al Levavecha. Vishinan tam levanecha, vidibar tabam, vishiv techa bave techa, uvlech techa vaderech, ushoch becha uvkumecha, ukshar tam leot al yadecha, vihayu le tota fot bain e necha, uchtav tam al mezuzot be techa, uvish arecha. Lema'an tizkeru v'asitem et kol mitzvotai, v'yitem kedoshim le'elohechem, ani Adonai elohechem, asher hotzeti etchem me'eretz mitzrayim, yot lachem le'elohim, ani Adonai elohechem. Page 197. We continue responsively, who is like you among the silent, mute and inscrutable, you witness our pain. Once upon a time, the sea was split. Centuries of innocent blood, lives lost to hunger, war to cruelty or indifference, and those who died with your name on their lips, and still they perish, still they perish in distant lands, and still they languish on our chilly streets. Your creatures are drowning even now. 
ever silent, hiding out in history. You have your reasons, or so they say. You left us on our own, so let us give you leave. Withdraw into yourself. Into yourself withhold your saving power, and we will live on. Page 198, we continue responsively. In the depths of night, by the edge of the river, Jacob was left alone. In heartfelt longing in the temple of God, Hannah uttered her prayer. In the barren wilderness, in doubt and despair, Elijah found God alone on the holiest day. The high priest entered alone. We are bound to one another in myriad ways, but each soul needs time to itself. In solitude we meet the solitary one. Silence makes space for the still small voice. For the psalmist says, deep calls unto deep. From the depths of our soul we seek what is most profound. Please rise. Adonai, 
Vatai Tiftach, Ufia Gitte Himate. Your life-giving power is forever, Adonai, with us in life and in death. You liberate and save, cause dew to descend, and with mercy abundant, lovingly nurture all life. From life to death, you are the force that flows without end. You support the falling, heal the sick, free the imprisoned and confined. You are faithful even to those who rest in the dust. Power beyond power, from whom salvation springs, sovereign over life and death, who is like you? Merciful God, who compares with you? With tender compassion, you remember all creatures for life. Faithful and true, worthy of our trust, you sustain our immortal yearnings. In you we Wellspring of blessing, power eternal, you are the one who gives and renews all life. Please be seated. Page 209. We continue responsively. Today we call it by its rightful name, a day of dread, Nora. Vayom, unwelcome visitor, for we want to live in a sunny world where God is love and all endings are happy. But the dream. (laughs) 
for all things are judged and all things will pass and life ends in a heartbeat. At the start of the year, in the season of truth, comes the day of remembrance. For all we forget and all we deny, and we fall on our knees in the depths of our hearts, for we know that the bell tolls for us. The words are old and the language was theirs, but the call is real and the message is ours. Take hold of your life while you still have a chance. For your story will end, and it might be this year. In a way you don't know, take hold of your life. Make things right while you can, and don't miss the call of the day of dread. Page 213, again we read responsively, an empty page, an open book, a day of ultimate questions. 
and still be here next year at this time. What is in store for my family? What will become of my friends? New love, new babies, marriages deepening or breaking apart, prosperity, struggle, reversals of fortune, illness, and health await us. Who will be missing when we gather next? Who will stand apart? On the edge of the unknown, we tremble. What lies ahead for us all? An empty page, an open book. Nothing is written and nothing is sealed. Flesh and blood, frail creatures, our lives are fleeting and subject to chance. Yet this we possess the strength strength to persist, to to prevail, prevail, to comfort one another in the dark. Prayer, right action, a turning toward the good, These give us hope and help us bear the pain of life. Oh, uh-huh. 
215, we continue responsively. 
when we walk through a valley of darkness, but find courage to live in the shadow of pain, we transcend the harshness of the degree. When we speak about fear with honesty and share what is hardest to say, we transcend the harshness of the decree. When day becomes night, but we let ourselves hope, we transcend the harshness. When we feel far from caring and friendship, but let go of pride to ask for help. When in grief we are crushed by the absence of love, but open ourselves to your presence. Page 218.
page 235. The teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. Your fellow human being is a mirror for you. If there is love and compassion in your soul, you will see the goodness in others. If you see a blemish in another, it is your own imperfection you encounter. Take careful note of the flaws you perceive in others. This is a lesson for you. They are your own flaws set before you, a reminder of your own spiritual work. Turn to page 238 for Fritzsang. <laughs> Page 245. Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev taught, the hands of the Kohanim were a language in themselves. Hands held out with the palms facing up indicate the desire to receive. Hands held up with the palms facing down indicate the desire to give. So when the Kohanim lifted up their hands to bless, they did not wish to pray for themselves, but only to bestow God's bounty on the people. Let's read together. Holy One, we strive to be a nation of priests, our lives consecrated to holy work. Help us to use our hands as instruments of divine service, conduits of your goodness. May blessings flow through to our children, our friends, and all the lives we touch. We turn the page.
In the month before Rosh Hashanah, we had a special book that we used called Mishkan Halev. And in that book, I found what I think is the most beautiful introduction to Avinu Malkenu. I share it with you this morning. Forgive us, Avinu, we have sinned. Pardon us, Malkenu, we have transgressed. For you are the one who pardons and forgives. Or maybe it's this way. Forgive us, Avinu. Pardon us, Malkenu. And God replies, no, it's you. You are the one who must pardon. You are the one who must forgive. Forgive the ones around you. You're wasting precious time. Forgive your parents. They did the best they could. Forgive the one who betrayed you. Let go of anger and move on. Forgive yourself for your own imperfection. Please rise.
Traditionally, say this three times. We're only going to say it once, but I, I encourage you all to, to pay attention to the English translation. Adonai, God, compassionate, gracious, endlessly patient. So, God, you're, you have so much patience for us, and you show mercy to us. We only say this during the high holidays. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Erecha Paim, Verav Chesed Vemet, Notzer Chesed Lalafim, Oh. 
Be seated. I'm going to set this Torah up for our first reader, then walk to the center as I did on Rosh Hashanah. You can find the reading for this morning's Torah portion in your book on page number 266. We read from the book of Deuteronomy. And I'm going to invite up Tina Marua. Tina is here this morning. Step over here. You can take yours off now. Sure. <laughs> Tina, just tell me when you have found the words Atem Nitzavim Hayom. I have found the words. She came to practice during the week, so I know she knows it's right there. (laughs) So for our first Aliyah this morning, I thought I would ask all of the following people to please rise. If, if you have celebrated a bar or bat mitzvah, a b'nai mitzvah, a benot mitzvah, confirmation, consecration, or wedding here at Temple Emmanuel, Please rise for the first Aliyah. You can find the words for the Aliyah in your book. I think it's back a page or two. 258, you'll find the words. So there are a number of people that fill that category. Whenever you're ready, please. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Haolam. Asher Achar Banu Mikol Hamim. Benahat Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Atah Adonai Noteh HaTorah. Amen. Atem nitzavim hayom, kuchem lifne Adonai Elohechem, Rashechem, Shivtechem, Zignechem, Vishitrechem, Kol Ish Yisrael. Tabchem nishechem, Vegercha asher, 
בקרב מחניך מכותב אצלך עד שאוהב ממך לאברכה בברית אדוני אלוהיך ובעלתו אשר אדוני אלוהיך קוראת עומך היום למען הקים אותך היום לעולם והוא יהיה לך לאלוהים כאשר דיבר לך וכאשר נשבע לאבותיך לאברהם ליצחק וליעקב ולא איתכם לבדכם אנוכי קוראת את הברית הזאת ואת העלה הזאת כי את אשר ישנו פה עמנו עומד היום לפני אדוני אלוהינו ואת אשר איננו פה עמנו היום. You stand this day, all of you in the presence of Adonai your God, your tribal heads, elders and officials, every man, woman and child of Israel and the stranger in your, myth, in your camp. From the one who cuts your wood to the one who draws your water to enter into the covenant of Adonai your God and the oath Adonai your God makes with you this day to establish you as God's people and to be your God as promised to you and sworn to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and not with you alone do I make this covenant and this oath but with each one who stands here among us this day in the presence of Adonai our God and with each one who is not here among us this day. And those who stood before for the blessing before, I invite you to stand again for the blessing after. Aruch you may be seated. I'd like to invite to the Bima Jack Novick, who is going to continue reading for us this morning. Jack, when you find a place, the yacht is there, just let me know. We're jumping ahead a little bit in the text this morning. On page 267, we're on verse number 11. Okay? Yep. So for the second Aliyah, I'm going to ask those who celebrated a bar or bat mitzvah, a b'nai mitzvah, a benot mitzvah, confirmation, consecration, or a wedding at another temple besides Temple Emmanuel to please rise for the next Aliyah. Together, bar. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Adonai. Amen. Ki ha mitzvah asot asher anochi mitzavcha hayom lo niflet hihi bimcha velo dezoscha ha vezoscha hihi lo vashamayim hi lehe mohor mi yale lanu hashamayim ha Vigi kazez lanu, vayash mienu otoho, vina asenaha. 
ולא הור מעבר לים היא לאמור מי יעבר לנו אל עבר הים ויקזז עלינו וישמיענו אותו ונעשנה כי קרוב אליך הדבר מאור בפיך ובלבדך לעשתו ראה נתתי לפניך היום את הזזים ואת הטוב ואת המוות ואת הרע אשר אנוכי מצבך היום לאהבה את אדוני אלוהיך ללכת בדרכיו לשמור מצוותיו וזוז כותיו ומשפטיו וזז ייתה ורבית וברכך אדוני אלוהיך בארץ אשר אתה ושמה לרשתה For this mitzvah, which I command you this day, is neither beyond you nor far away. It is not in heaven, causing you to say, who will go up to heaven on our behalf, get it for us, and let us hear it, that we may do it. And it is not across the sea, causing you to say, who will cross the sea on our behalf, get it for us, let us hear it, that we may do it. No, this is so very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart that you can surely do it. Behold, this day I place before you life and well-being, death and hardship in the command that I, that I command you this day to love Adonai and walk in the ways of your God, to observe the mitzvot, laws and judgments, so you may live and flourish, blessed, blessed by Adonai your God in the land that is about to be yours. Those who were just standing, if you'd stand again for the blessing after the reading of Torah. The next prayer that we'll be chanting is on page 261. 261 is known as Birkat HaGomel. And the musical setting I have doesn't follow these words exactly, but I really am inspired by these words. The Birkat HaGomel is a prayer that is generally said during the Torah service in a traditional synagogue. Someone who has just had an enormous illness generally is brought up to the bima and the cantor or the rabbi places hands on them and says birkat hagomel and this is a prayer that is to thank god for healing this person from this grave illness earlier in the service we did a lot of prayers that i really thought to myself gee i wish i had given some sort of thoughtful speech beforehand because I, I, I want you all to connect to it as much as I do, so I'm just going to do it all now. So, but I'm going to relate it back to this prayer. I've got a small plan here. In the prayer of Barosh Hashanah, so my partner Corey, he said to me, why are we talking about all this death? How, 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 how are we going to die? That's so depressing. Yeah, but also... <laughs> Every year I relate to that prayer in a different way. Because every year someone, this is going to sound real intense, someone in my life dies a different way. So this year in New York, there was Hurricane Ida and people drowned in their apartments. And uh, we say, um, 
Mi ha esh umi vamayim, who by fire and who by water. And there's other parts of that prayer where who will die old and who will die young. And two years ago when my mother died, she was just 67, I thought, oh my God, who died young, who never had a chance to grow old. And we had earthquakes this year. So that's not all just archaic stuff. That stuff is real. And we wonder about that stuff because later on in the service we talk about um, the Sefer Hazikro note, the Book of Memories. How are we going to die this? How, how, by the next Yom Kippur, who will have died and how will they die? And it just makes me think, what can I do this year so that if, God forbid, I should perish by next Yom Kippur, how am I living this life to the fullest? Am I doing tzedakah? Am I doing acts of justice, acts of goodness? And when I think of Birkat HaGomel, I can't help but think of, like my friend Kristen, who we would take walks through the park and she would wear two masks. If I rode to her house on the subway, she would make me change my clothing before I got to her house. She was COVID crazy. She got COVID totally double vaxxed. Well, I don't really believe in that phrase. She was vaccinated and um, she's fine. But I would bring her up here now. And when I think of all of the people who might have died in all the ways that we spoke about in Barosh Hashanah, perhaps they did not die. And this is a prayer that I think is really important. And I'd like to see us in Reform Judaism start really reciting this prayer more and more for people. So um, the words aren't in here exactly, but uh, I invite you to turn to page 261 as we um, observe Birkat HaGomel. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shegam Lanu Kol Tov, Once broken, I am now whole. Let's think for a moment of the many people we know who are in need of healing, members of our family, friends, all those who are not at their best at this moment. This morning, rather than read a long list of names, I'm going to invite everyone to just take a moment and think of those people that you know who are in need of healing. Say their names to yourself. See their faces in your minds. Think of them. Think of them all as on this Yom Kippur morning, we offer these words of healing, words of mi shaberach, on behalf of each and every one of them. In our books, page 273. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. 
On the bottom of page 274, I ask you to rise as I dress the Torah. <laughs> So we have been doing our best not to invite lots of people to the Bima on this Yom Kippur in this holiday season to keep, well, us as far from too much interaction, but we really wanted, of course, to hear the beautiful words of Isaiah this morning's Haftarah. So I had an interesting idea a few days ago. I said, Candor, why don't I chant the blessing before, the shorter one? And you chant the blessing after the longer one, and we read the text together back and forth with each other. So I'm hoping I can chant this blessing. Page 275. Baruch <laughs> Veratsava divrehem 
הנאמרים באמת. ברוך אתה אדוני הבוחר בתורה ובמשה עבדו ובישראל עמו ובנביאי האמת וצדק. Page 277, these are very important words of Isaiah. Cry from the depth, says God. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like the shofar. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Yes, they seek me daily, as though eager to learn my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not abandoned God's law. They ask of me the right way, eager for God's nearness. They say, we, why did we fast and you do not see it? We afflict ourselves and you do not know it. Because even on your fast day, you think only of desire while oppressing all who work for you. Because your fasting is filled with strife and with callous fist you strike. No. Your fasting this day will not lift up your voice before heaven. Is this the fast I desire? A day to afflict body and soul, bowing your head like a reed, covering yourself with sackcloth and ashes. Do you call this a fast, a day worthy of the favor of Adonai? Is not this the fast I desire? to break the bonds of injustice and remove the heavy yoke, to let the oppressed go free and release all those enslaved. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to take the homeless poor into your home and never to neglect your own flesh and blood? Then shall your light burst forth like the dawn and your wounds shall quickly heal, your righteous one leading the way before you, the presence of Adonai guarding you from behind. Then when you call, Adonai will answer. When you cry, will respond, I am here. If you remove the chains of oppression, the menacing hand, the malicious word, if you offer your compassion to the hungry and satisfy the suffering, then shall your light shine through the darkness and your night become bright as noon. Adonai will guard you always, slake your thirst in parched places, give strength to your bones. You shall be like a well-watered garden, an unfailing spring. For you they will build ancient ruins, lay foundations for ages to come, and you shall be called the one who mends the breach and brings back the streets for dwelling. If you cease to trample Shabbat, stop pursuing your affairs on my holy day. If you call Shabbat a delight, the holy day of Adonai honored, and if you honor God by not doing business or speaking of everyday matters, then shall you take pure delight in Adonai. I will lift up your journey on earth to the highest of places and nourish you from the heritage of your father Jacob. For thus spoke Adonai. I'm going to ask you all to please turn the page to 280 for an alternative Haftarah blessing specifically for Yom Kippur morning. Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech haolam Tzur kol haolamim Tzadik vechol hadorot Ha'el haneeman Ha'omer veoseh Hamedaber umekayim Shekol tevarav Emet vatzedek Al ha'torav Al ha'avodav Al ha'nevi'im 
ועל יום הכיפורים הזה, שנתת לנו, ארוני אלוהינו, למחילה ולזחילה ולכפרה, לכבוד ולתפארת. על הכל, אדוני אלוהינו, אנחנו מודים לך ומברכים אותך. יתברך שמך בפי כל חי, תמיד לעולם ועד, ודברך אמת וקיים לעד. ברוך אתה אדוני. מלך מוחל וסולח לעוונותינו, לעוונות עמו בית ישראל, ומעביר אשמותינו בכל שנה ושנה. מלך על כל הארץ מקדש ישראל. 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 מלך על כל הארץ מקדש ישראל ויום הכיפורים I just want to say I'm glad I chose the blessing before the Haftarah this morning. We're on page 290. We rise as the Torah is returned to the Ark. Yeah, hallelujah, Shem Adonai, Ki nizgav shemo levado, Hodo al eretz v'shama, We're on page 293. I ask you to read these words with me. Because I was angry, because I didn't think, because I was exhausted and on edge, because I'd been drinking, because I can be mean, 
because I was reckless and selfish, because I was worried about money, because my marriage was dead, because other people were doing it, because I thought I could get away with it, because I did something wrong, because I'm in pain, because I wish I could undo it, because I hurt him, because I lost her trust, because I let them down, because I was self-destructive, because I was foolish, because I'm ashamed, because that's not who I am, because that's not who I want to be, because I want to be forgiven. God, bring down my walls of defensiveness and self-righteousness. Help me to stay in humility. Please, strength. I'd like to teach this melody of Shema Kolenu. Shema Shema. Page 296. Our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Sure. 
page 300. We confess these sins together. Page 300. The ways we have wronged you under duress and by choice together with me if you would and harm we have caused you in our world consciously and unconsciously. The ways we have wronged you through our thoughtlessness and harm we have caused in your world through impulsive acts of malice the ways we have wronged you by abusing our power, and harm we have caused in your world through disrespect to parents and teachers, the ways we have wronged you by giving in to our hostile impulses, and harm we have caused in your world through inflexibility and stubbornness, the ways we have wronged you through lies and deceit, and harm we have caused in your world by making light of serious matters. The ways we have wronged you in our routine conversations and harm we have caused in your world through envy. For all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. Oh, 
openly and secretly, and harm we have caused in your world by hating without cause, the ways we have wronged you by losing self-control, and harm we have caused in your world through consumption of food and drink, the ways we have wronged you through sexual immorality, and harm we have caused in your world by hardening our hearts the ways we have wronged you through greed and exploitation, and harm we have caused in your world through dishonesty in business, the ways we have wronged you through our innermost thoughts, and the harm we have caused in your world through gossip and rumor, the ways we have wronged you by offering or accepting bribes, and harm we have caused in your world by profaning your name in public, for all these failures of judgment and will, God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, lead us to atonement. Continue for a few moments of silent reflection and silent prayer, followed by a beautiful piece of violin music, and then we invite after that Rabbi Lewis to the Bima to share his thoughts with us on this Yom Kippur afternoon.
Rabbi Lewis, if you'd come on to the Bima now and share your words, your thoughts with us. I want to share with you this morning feelings, laughter, thoughts, experiences, the sense of loss, the sense of longing, the sense of love, a deepness of life. But before that, I want to make a comment on our music, particularly on Cantor David, because you may have noticed that some of the melodies he sang were not the melodies you are accustomed to hearing uh, for the Shema, for example, and there were others that had different melodies. These are the melodies that are traditional for the High Holy Days. I was reminded of that because 50 years ago when I was in my 30s, I was asked by the board to hire somebody to sing for the High Holy Days. And I hired somebody who really knew, as does David, the right chazanut, the right melodies for the holidays. I was thrilled with him. Some people were not. And I heard at the board the next month, you made a mistake, Lewis. What was my mistake that month? The mistake was you hired the person, the person sang the wrong songs. I said, no, he sang the right melodies. You asked me to go out and bring you back butter. You're used to margarine. That was butter. This is butter. I also want to thank you, David, because in your remarks on Rosh Hashanah, you explain the peace that is added to the Kaddish, le'elam and elam u'alba, an additional idea of the height, the breadth, the depth, the distance, and the closeness of God. And that opened up for me something that I had been working on already, of, of the closeness of life of who we are, where we come from, where we're going, whom we travel with. And it helped me to understand more clearly a piece of poetry I have been trying to understand more and more deeply. And when you hear it, you'll ask yourself, what's the geschichte? It's a little piece. It says, Yesterday is past, P-A-S-S-E-D. Tomorrow, a dream. Now, is. And each time I read it, I find a greater depth. And each time I find that depth, I find a greater depth of myself. I understand that what has passed does not simply go away. It leaves its own glow, it leaves its own stream. Tomorrow, a dream. I am at the stage of my life where dreams are coming to fruition, and I understand them more clearly and some are wonderful, and some are nightmares. And so, I remember the prophets saying, the old shall dream dreams, and the young will see visions. To dream a dream, you have to have had experience, something on which to base the dream. You may not be able to understand your own dreams. We cannot always understand our own dreams. 
but they are made up of bits and pieces of our reality. And the youth will see visions. They haven't lived long enough to have the dream, but they have a vision of what could be. And it reminds me that on this Yom Kippur morning, I am very much missing my father. And when I think of life and death, longevity, shortness of life, at this stage of my life, he comes very clearly into my mind. I don't know exactly why it is, I don't know if because in a few months I will turn 80 and that feels like a significant turning point to me. I don't know if it is because in my dreams and my reality and the way in which I live my life today, I can appreciate differently, more fully, the lessons he taught me without saying, I'm going to sit you down and teach you this. He taught me the importance of work. He taught me the importance of honesty. He taught me the importance of how to be a husband and a father, even how to be a grandfather, and how to sit at the seat of a chair and let two granddaughters, Julie and Jamie, play barbershop, which meant that my father's head was pounded with brushes as my grandson Jacob and my granddaughter Ellie did with me. And I loved those bruises. And I loved those children. And now I can love my father in ways I could not when I was younger. And maybe it's because after all these years and all this self-reflection, I have been able to jettison, to throw out a lot of what I did not need to carry any longer. Maybe it's because I don't need those old wounds. Maybe it's because those words that were said in haste or anger or without thought don't matter that much. Maybe it's because I am more content with who I am And I'm enjoying art, making art, and writing, and making jewelry. Something I never did, something I never thought about. And I find that in that creativity, if I think, I can't do it. My head gets in the way. So I've learned how to take my head out of the way. And maybe, Maybe it's because of Stissel. Some of you have probably seen the program Stissel. It's an Israeli soap drama, soap opera, all in Hebrew, and it's about the ultra-Orthodox in Israel. And the main character is called, his last name is Stissel, which is an odd name, so I looked it up. And in Yiddish, Stissel means a sort of a chatzi would like to be artist. I think his son is an artist, but the father, not so much. And in Stissel, in a particular segment, and I've seen, I have to be fair to the whole program, I have seen of all the Stissel episodes, three minutes. I just never got into it, and during Passover, our other daughter, Julie, was in town, and she was sitting after dinner watching Stissel, and I walked in to sit and spend some time with her. And while I was sitting there, Stissel was having an argument with his son and with somebody else, and Stissel said, Isaac Besheba Singer, who was never a good writer, according to Stissel, according to any encyclopedia or information you look at, he was a prize-winning author in English, in Yiddish, and just world-renowned. If you read his material, you'll love it. And Stissel says, Isaac Bechsheba Singer said, every man is a cemetery. And in that cemetery are his grandmother and his grandfather. 
and his father and his mother and any children he may have had to bury. And I had brothers, sisters, siblings, cousins. And I think on this Yom Kippur, all of that comes to me. All of those names, all of those feelings, all of those recollections. And as I listen to the liturgy, they are here. We are, when we read Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Sarah, Rachel, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. The rabbis tell us that we are to read that and to recite that because we are saying to God, don't forget me, don't leave me out of life. I am the descendant of these people. And I'm suggesting on this Yom Kippur morning that we read it slightly differently. Because I am the descendant of these people, because we are the descendants of these people, we are enriched, and we live, and we give life, and we live life, and we hurt in life, and we laugh in life. My father was never a person who spoke very much. He had another person in the house who spoke a lot. But my father was known as a one-liner. And you didn't want to get caught up in his one line if you were at the wrong end. Some were funny, some were quite to the point. We lived in a small, blue-collar, lower-middle-class neighborhood where everybody went off to work in the morning with their little tin buckets and came home about the same time at night, except for Mr. Potty, who lived down the street. He was the undertaker. I didn't see him often, and I saw his wife once or twice a year. But I said to my father, as he and I were walking, my father and I were walking, how come Mr. Potty's wife, every time I see her, is pregnant? And I'm just a kid. And my father said, he keeps her well embalmed. <laughs> That's my father. That's part of the humor. But the insights that he had on how to live and how to say to his children, you must do better than I have. Not because I'm ashamed of myself, I am not. But I want more for you. And so at his funeral, my brother, my sisters, and I counted up 17 graduate degrees between four children. This is a day of memory, it is a day of dreams, it is a day of loss, it is a day of living, loving. I learned from my father how to love more adequately as a husband, even in the midst of disease and desperation. How to be a better father by just listening how to walk from 79 into 80 and feel Henry Bernard Lewis and his father, Jacob Kimmel Lewis, and my other grandfather, Albert Mannheimer, and to walk with them and to know that here now we sit with them, you sit with yours and I sit with mine and we sit all together with ours. And I invite you to join all of us at Yisker. They will be here. They will sit with us. They will impact us. Years ago, we had two cello pieces in the afternoon service. And I knew if I closed my eyes in the second one, it was a certain amount of time, I could just take myself to Northport, and I would just transport myself to, tr to Northport for three minutes and then come back for the rest of the service. And one year I didn't get to Northport, but a whole 
parade of people who had died in the years since I came to temple, came, this was my reality, came in my vision and walked across in the dream, walked across the stage. Al, I just want you to know I'm okay. Hi, Ben. Hi, Sam. I'm okay. They're okay. Sit with them. Learn from them. Feel them as deeply as you can, and you will be alive and alivened and enriched and full of all that is important in the new year. Shana Tova. Remember me Though I have to say goodbye Remember me Don't let it make you cry For even if I'm far away I hold you in my heart I see a secret song to you each night we are apart remember me though I have to travel far remember me each time you hear a sad guitar know that I with you the only way that I can be until you're in my arms again remember Thank you, Rabbi Lewis, beautiful words. Thank you, Cantor, for your beautiful voice. Thank all of our musicians for their beautiful additions this morning to our services. We're going to break now. Those that might want to join with me for a discussion, we're going to be using this book. Um, there's a reading on page number 21. There are lots of these books available, either outside of the tent or by the books. It's called Going In Deep, What It Takes to Really Change. I'll meet you under the tent about 1.15 for a discussion of this. Three o'clock is our family service under the tent. Perfect weather. 4.15, we continue back in this sanctuary with afternoon service and some healing prayers. Five o'clock or about five o'clock, we have our Yisker service, including our beautiful uh, video, memoriam video of all those that have passed away since last Yom Kippur with some beautiful music and our service ends, our day ends with Ni'ila and our concluding service and our cantor has brought some just beautiful new pieces in to share with us for that concluding service. Um, there is for those that have reserved that take home break the fast box. So those are available, I believe, beginning after Yisker, but we invite everyone who comes to Yisker, of course, to stay with us until the end of the day. So uh, wishing everyone who is fasting an easy fast and to everyone a good yontif. <laughs>